But we begin tonight in Taranaki, yes, the oil and gas capital of New Zealand, which may, all going well, turn out to be slightly ironic, because tonight we meet a man desperate to reduce our dependency on oil and gas. He's built a car, an electric car, and even more impressively, it's an electric car that really works. Richard Langston with the story of the man who may never visit a gas station again, except to put air in his tyres. So, Gabe, show us what you've got under the bonnet here. All right. Now, I've uh, taken out the oil-burning engine, replaced it with uh, 12 deep cycle batteries and a big electric motor. It's incredible. There is, uh, this does not look like the traditional car. Well, it's all. not, and uh, there's nothing to fix either. It's, uh, the only maintenance I have to do is uh, putting water in the batteries every, uh, every month or so. Early this year, Gavin Shoebridge of New Plymouth decided it was high time to start down the road to his own motoring future, an electric car. Never, he felt, had the time been so right. The main reason was I got tired of paying for gas. I mean, gas has just got up to over $1.70 a litre now, so uh, last thing I want to do is shell out 50 bucks a week anymore. Environmental concerns as well. I wanted to do my bit for New Zealand's clean green image, but, uh, but the main, main factor was not paying 50 bucks a week in gas anymore. So uh, it'll be nice. I'll only have to go to the gas station and put air in the tyres now. And because Gavin's a resourceful bloke, he decided to build the car himself, from scratch, even though he knew nothing about cars. It was a crash course. I didn't really know what I was getting into, but uh, it ended up, ended up being pretty straightforward. Um, had a lot of uh, resources uh, from the internet, lots of other people in the USA doing the same thing. Uh, so had a lot of help via the internet and email. Uh, but really it was, a, it was a jump in the deep end converting a car to electricity. Because you, you're not a mechanic by no, trade, oh, eh? No, no, no. I can change my own motor oil, but that's about it. All right. So uh, if I can do this, anyone can. Gavin filmed his progress from the moment he bought his car of the future, a 1987 Mitsubishi Tredia, for $180. He posted episodes of his mechanical odyssey on the web. Once, while he waited for parts from the USA, he went to Europe and married his Slovakian-born wife. From the engineer, the and he was soon becoming a cause celeb among the international electric car set. Had a lot of people clicking on that. I've had over 100,000 hits just on YouTube, which is amazing. Didn't think there was that much interest in it. 100,000? So from, from where? Oh, from all over the world, mainly America, but uh, Europe and uh, Australasia as well. Got the seatbelt on, lights on. After eight months of toil, last Friday night, in a dark, quiet street in New Plymouth, he took his newly completed electric car out to see if it went. Listen to the joy and triumph in his voice. That is so bloody cool. <laughs> this must be the EV grin people talk about. <laughs> it's just <laughs> worth every cent. So cool. Oh my god, I can't believe you have done it. I'm so proud. <laughs> Oh, that was an amazing feeling. Eight months of work coming together that one Friday night, just to take it just quietly up and down the road, uh, just blew me away. It was great to see the brainchild finally, you know, coming into fruition, just to see this car finally running. It's been marvellous. You, you could hear the excitement in oh, your voice. Yeah, you could yeah, hardly yeah. believe it, could you? No, I've got lots and lots of comments from, uh, from other YouTube watchers about that video, so, and I've inspired lots of others to uh, convert their cars to electricity as well. So, so only good things are going to come from it. Electric cars have laboured under the impression that they're too slow, but not this one. It'll easily do 100 kilometres an hour. I wanted to prove that uh, you can build an electric car that will um, keep up with the gas cars, maybe overtake a few on the way. It actually feels just like a normal car. It's, uh, apart from when you stop at the lights and there's no engine noise, that's when you sort of wonder, oh, oh no, that's right, it's electric. Okay, so you, I'll have a drive light. Okay. Oh, no clutch. No clutch. Just pop it in second gear and uh, away you go. It's so smooth and so quiet. Yeah, it's amazing how, how So you just put it in gear and you're away. Yeah, second gear will do you from zero up to about 60 k's an hour. If you want to hit the highway, then put it in third. That's all you need. It does have its limitations. It will only travel 60 k before it needs a recharge. That's fine with Gavin, as he only wants to use it for round town running. 
He estimates he'll save two and a half thousand dollars a year in petrol and hundreds in maintenance bills, so the car will soon pay itself off. Do you think you're, this is an eccentric one-off? or? Oh, no, no, no. There's six other people in New Zealand building these at the moment as well, and it's only growing as well. So it's really starting to take off, especially with the price of gas. It costs Gavin about $2 a time to charge his car for each 60k of motoring. And he plans to build his own wind generator or solar unit, so it'll cost him exactly nothing. So possibly the time has come for the electric car, do you think? Oh, I think so. I mean, it's always been around. The, uh, it was one stage back in the early 20th century, there were more electric cars on the road than petrol cars. Really? But, uh, but then because their range was limited, you know, low battery technology, the uh, petrol car succeeded it. And uh, it's only a matter of time now before the electric car takes off.